Okay, we're moving on to a calculus question. And after the calculus, we'll do some geometry. They give us a function. They say f of x is 4 minus 3x squared. Now, folks, that's a catch. And the square is more or less a catch for those of you that work quickly. Don't fall into that trap. There's a square. If you square something and it's a binomial, becomes a trinomial. Don't forget that. And if there's a negative in front of it, rather first square and then take the negative in. Okay, they ask us for the first derivative and they ask it by first principles. Let me just see for how many marks. Five marks. Okay, so we can immediately start. We know we need f of x plus h. Okay, f of x plus h will be 4 minus 3 times x plus h squared. Now you'll see I keep this in its bracket and I'm going to keep the negative on the outside for now. This is a binomial. If I square a binomial, it becomes a trinomial. Don't forget about the baby in the middle. Okay, there's a baby in the middle and it has mommy and daddy's genes, hx. Okay, so now we can move the 3 in. So minus 3x squared, minus 6hx, minus 3h squared. That is f of x plus h. So we are now going to, now remember, first principles, it's a gradient. It's the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values. So the further y value was f of x plus h. I subtract f of x from it and I divide the result by h. So this will be 4 minus 3x squared minus 6hx minus 3h squared. Now be careful over here. It's minus 4 plus that negative here at the top is going to become plus 3x squared when I subtract them. All of that's divided by h. Now this is the step matrix where you check yourself. Everything that's left after this step must have an h in it, else you made a sign mistake. Please remember that. Okay, let's see. There's a positive 4 minus 4. Positive 3x squared minus 3x squared. And beautiful, we have an h left at, in every term that remains at the top. So let's remove the h. We know it's going to cancel with the h that lies waiting in the denominator. So this becomes minus 6x minus 3h. Okay, folks, and what's left after that is for us to just divide this away. We have minus 6x minus 3h. Okay, so now remember, you've done the gradient. You have the average gradient, the gradient between points x plus h and point x. Now we're going to subtract them. Oh, we did subtract them and divide by h. Now we're going to take the limit. You have to write the definition down at least once. So we are acknowledging we're taking the first derivative with respect to x by taking the limit when h approaches naught of this average gradient which we had just calculated. Okay, so this becomes the limit when h approaches 0 of minus 6x minus 3h, don't forget to put that in a bracket. Okay, you're going to lose a mark if you don't. Okay, so now the h becomes naught, and our first derivative, by first principle, excuse me, is minus 6x. Okay, so there you've got to work slowly, folks. You've got to earn, I, say, I think I said it's five marks, yes. You've got to earn those five marks. It's a giveaway question. It will always be there. The only way we make it difficult is by putting a negative in front of the squared term, or we might put a fraction in like three over two somewhere, so that you either stumble over the negative or over the fraction. So do it slowly so that you don't make silly mistakes. The next part of this question says the following. 
if um, A is the point, now remember, uh, they're talking about F. Now let me just put F back here for us. The function we were working with was F of X, which is equal to 4 minus 3X squared. Okay, now they say, if A and B are both points that lie on the function F, so A and B are on F, but now important is that this X value has got to be negative. Calculate the numerical value of the average gradient between A and B. Now, folks, we know what that means. They're asking us to find F um, of whatever the point A is representing minus F of whatever is represented in point B as a Y value. Okay, and that will be over the two points A minus B. Now, it's not really what I've written here, but that is the idea that we get. That is what they expect us to do. Okay, so do we have the Y value of point A? Let's have a look. For point A, we've got the Y value. So we can say that that Y value is indeed minus 23. Do we have the Y value for point B? No, we don't. But we do have its X value. So we can go here and say, okay, for the Y value of B, I need to use the function F and I need to plug X with 2 into this. So I get 4 minus 3 times 2 squared, which is 4. 4 minus 12 leaves minus 8. Am I right? Yes. 4 minus the 12 leaves us with minus 8. Okay, so now I've got the Y value at point B. It is minus 8. Now, do I have the X value at point A? And the answer to that is no, I don't. But I have the Y value. So, to find the X value, I need to go back to the function they gave me. Okay, so they're just making us work a little bit here. Usually this question is so easy on a paper that they have to give you some work to do. Else you're going to laugh at this paper. It's going to be too easy. Okay, so the Y value is minus 23. So minus 23 is equal to 4 minus 3X squared. The 4 jumps to the left-hand side, gives us minus 27 is minus 3X squared. And folks, I'm sure you can see from that, that X squared is 9 which makes x equal to negative 3y because they told us that the a, uh, right at the beginning here, that the x value for point a is negative. So here we have minus 3, minus, do we have the x value for point b? Yes, we do. That is 2. Okay, so let's see. We got minus 23 plus 8. Don't fall over that. Divide it by minus 5. That gives us minus 15 over minus 5. And we all know for centuries that is 3. Nothing has changed. So the average gradient, the numerical value of the average gradient between those two points is indeed 3. Okay, let's look at the next part of this particular question. It says, for four marks, you have, um, uh, let me go back, there we go. You have an expression, and you need to differentiate it with respect to x. That's what this symbol means. F prime x, another way to say that is say dy over dx. If your function is given as y equals something in x, and here, we're going to say dx because we have a function in brackets. It's not really a function. We have an expression in brackets, which we need to differentiate with respect to the variable of x. Okay, now remember, before you can differentiate, you have to have this written with a power over the x, not a root. If there's an x in a denominator, we take it up, we make the power negative. And if there's x under a root, we write it as a power. 
Now, please remember, your exponential law says the a-th root of x to the power b is nothing other than x to the b over a. That's the only trick that we have going in this problem. So let's fix it so that we can differentiate it. We are not differentiating yet, so we keep the capital DX coming along. 4X cubed is ready to be differentiated. This side was not. So that becomes minus 2 times X to the power B over A. B is 1 in this case, so X to the power 1 over 5. Now, matrix, you are ready for 4 marks to differentiate this. Now we're going to drop the notation. We say this is equal to 12x squared. Minus 2 times a fifth is 2 over 5. x to the 1 fifth minus 1 and minus 1 is 5 fifths leaves us with minus 4 fifths in the power of x. Okay, that there you should get your full marks. Know how to differentiate by using rules. Know your exponential laws and know how to turn roots and thirds into powers and fractions with x's underneath uh, in the denominator. Those x's have to go to the top as a power.